Dr. Suraj, the floor is yours. Uh, the class yeah. is yours. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chido. I, I hope everybody can hear me very clearly. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you so much. I, I thanks for Afri Mail for bringing but me. But we're not seeing you, no. Oh, we're not seeing me? Screen soon. We can see okay. him. Uh, you, can see me? you can see me? Yes, we can, we can see, see you. you. Okay. We can. So well, let we me thank Afri Mail for bringing me as a facilitator of this training. And also uh, these beautiful faces I'm seeing around the world. Uh, thanks for UNESCO also for me this, for making this happening. Uh, Julie, Rose, uh, Artin, and Peanut. And uh, I'm much more than excited uh, because I'm not, uh, you know, when you have a baby, when you conceive a baby, you get pregnant and the baby is born and you're not sure that baby up. You are the joy of the mother is always there that the baby is growing, and that's what has exactly happened to Emma here. You see, uh, by providence, I happen to be one of those people uh, who are the author of this second edition uh, of this book, and it's my joy that I'm also facilitating this training and also uh, pushing Emma narratives in every sphere. Well, let me just give us a background. There are two things. We look. I don't know how many of you have seen the first edition, but I've seen from what you have said here that the second edition, some of us have not seen it. Uh, some have seen it, they've not read it, some have read it. And those who have read it, I don't know how much uh, time they've taken to look at it critically. Now, but two things are happening in the second edition when we met in Serbia. One, we removed the word teachers to bring in educators because we want, to, we want to go beyond classroom, educator, the ministry, those who are in the Ministry of Education, those who are in the Ministry of Information, those who are going to involve in non-classroom uh, curriculum, because the curriculum is not just only for the classroom, it's also for outsiders out there. So the educators is more broadened than education. Then the second day, the word teachers, we now put learners, uh, the word uh, students, we put learners because you don't, you don't have to be necessarily a student. Emma Health, it has to be something like everybody should be tutored in that competency. So whether you are student, whether you are artisans, any whatever you are, wherever you are, you are, you are supposed to acquire that competency. The third thing is the digital aspect of it. You see that the communication landscape has changed from the first uh, curriculum to when we had the second curriculum. So internet, digital platforms have changed the communication uh, as sphere. So there's need to bring in that digital competencies which you have. And so I will start my slides, my sharing of my slides with that background. Uh, I will actually uh, have uh, three, I divided the slide into three, my presentation into three. Uh, the, the first one will be talking about uh, the MRL. I'm talking about my core content, uh, core content of MRL and pedagogy. So I'm going to look at it from, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sharing a wrong slide. I'm very, very sorry. Let me give you, let me uh, put up the, the right one. So I, like I said, I will be, my, my presentation will be in three. Uh, one, is I'll talk about MI Health itself. Uh, what is MI Health, the components of MI Health? And then uh, I'll also talk about using the curriculum. How do you use the curriculum as training or training? And then I'll also talk about the pedagogy of that training. So uh, let me start with the first one. But let me say that this class, I want this class to be participatory and inclusive because MI is about engagement, critical thinking, and then, you know, expression, dialogue. And so as I've seen some of our names on the chat, uh, please, you permit me sometimes if I call on you and say you should have a kind of, uh, you know, I want to, want to, want to, to talk because uh, I'm sure that most of you are well familiar with MI here and you can take this course very well. So I'm just sharing information here. And like FC, FC uh, Foskett said, 
He said, information is what everybody know. Knowledge is what I know. So I want you to bring your knowledge inside so you can have a shared knowledge. So uh, I will start by asking a question that uh, if I ask you, what is MIR? If somebody accosted you on the road and said, look, I've heard so much about this. MIR is everywhere, global MIR week. When you talk about UNESCO, you're talking about it, global citizenship. What is exactly MIR? Can somebody just give me a definition of MIR? Just what's your idea about MIR? A definition. Anybody? Okay, can Tessie help? Okay. What? Uh, it's like we are still guarding our thoughts very well. <laughs> so let me, I know it's a very technical issue to define MIR. So I'm surprised if you are hesitating in giving definition of MIR because it's so broad. And to put it all in one or two statements will be very challenging. But actually, MIR, media and information literacy, is an interrelated set of competencies. Mark that word, interrelated set of competencies. It's not just one competency, one competency is inter, and those competencies are interrelated. That enables people's ability to think critically and click wisely in the new information, digital and communication landscape. Now, there are two things that came from that definition. That is, uh, our three things, Co competencies that are diverse. That is, there are so many competencies, visual competencies, uh, uh, media competencies, computer, there are so many comp library, library competencies, so many competencies, information, uh, literacy, but how do we, we have come to an age where we have divergence of technology, convergence of technology. So as this technology converge, as this medium converge, uh, also the, the information converge, whether in multimedia versions, we have converging literacy. The literacy cannot be seen as one. It must be, it must be something that is integrated. And that's why we have interrelated set of competencies. And what does it do? It makes you to engage. Those, it, can, it means that you cannot properly engage if you, don't have, if you just have one or two of those competencies and you don't have those competencies interrelated, you cannot fully engage. And what does it mean to engage? To think critically to think critically about information and to click wisely, ethically, and because we are having another different platform. And we have not really yet, I talk about fourth industrial revolution, uh, machine learning, they are all coming. So how do people have competency to deal with all these things? And so without wasting too much of your time, I will say, what are the principles behind my curriculum. What's the principle behind it? Why are we doing this? Why do you come up with second second uh, curriculum? What is the need for it? Well, is the first thing is that to support the achievement of the sustainable development goals. And we have seen that MI help play a lot of part in all those goals. It to achieve them, the citizen must acquire those competencies to promote peace and address a speech to advance human rights, yeah, to promote safety and the rule of law, advance cultural and linguistic diversity, which is multilingualism. You see, the multilingualism is key. Balance citizens' empowerment with measures to protect them from risk, support gender equality, reduce barriers to mutual understanding, reduce inequalities, foster social participation and tolerance to promote democracy and peace. So when you look at all these principles, you can see them in three ways. One, achieving sustainable development goal. Second, intercultural dialogue. Third, governance, governance, peaceful governance. So these principles, those three things summarize these principles. And so uh, for us to understand this critically, or we have to see the three elements that hair my hair actually embodies. You see, and this is where I need to stress. That's why I was not taken aback when I asked you for the definition of hair my hair, and there's a lot of thought processes going on. Uh, but the truth is that we have seen, like I said initially, 
And we have seen so many people who are talking about MRL in, in different angles. Some are pursuing information literacy, some are pursuing media literacy, some are pursuing computer literacy, some are pursuing digital literacy. But as far as all these are disciplines, that is why acting search is interdisciplinary. Yeah, we have to see that uh, the, there are so many disciplines. These disciplines are good on their own. They've done a fantastic job. But like I was saying, for the converging technology, the converging media, there must be a converging literacy. And for us to fully engage for citizen participation, for civic engagement, there's need to have competencies that are entirely chair, not just one or two. And so MIL is talking about three key elements. And the first one is information literacy, as you can see from your slide, uh, media literacy, and then digital literacy. Uh, without too much time, you can see information literacy is talking about how you define and articulate information need. People ask information, they want information, but they know how to articulate it. Uh, it's a big issue, actually. They must know and they must locate and access those information. Accessibility is another key issue here. Then access the information, organize the information so they can make use of them very well. Make ethical use of the information. Because ethics is a big issue here. Uh, communicate the information effectively so that there will be mutual understanding of the information you are communicating and that with tolerance and people should be able to express themselves without any hindrance, then the use of ICT skills for information processing. All these things define information literacy. And when you go to media literacy, you talk about understanding the role and functions of media. Like somebody said, McLuhan says, the media, the medium is the message. Because that shows that you can have to separate the two any longer. The platform also is the information. So they understand the rule of content of media, the content, what are the functions of this media? And how does internet computer companies also, what are their roles? Understand the condition under which media can fulfill their function. What are those conditions? Critically evaluate. This is another key word, evaluation. Critically evaluate media content in the light of media functions in the meat of the function they are providing and then engage yeah this another key word engage with media for self-expression and democratic participation civic engagement and then receive and review skills skills including ict to produce user generated content because media not communication. You can see that a lot of people now are talking about self-expression, system journalism. People are producing their media, and so they must produce media. And because that is where the uh, the uh, the empowerment is. And so uh, the third one is talking about uh, digital literacy. And digital literacy: How do you use digital tools? Many people don't know how to use these tools. They don't know how to use Zoom. They don't know how to engage. They don't know how to use a lot of things. And so they must use it. They must know how to use it. And they understand digital identity, digital presence, digital footprints. This matters a lot. Uh, recognize digital rights. What so their rights digitally, uh, when it comes to privacy, what their rights, the use of their data, what their rights, the use of the information they are talking about them, what is their right? They have the right to know. Uh, and then improve how to communicate digitally. And then manage digital health economics. You know, we have seen people who are going to a lot of uh, uh, problem because of the exposure to digital, the use of uh, phone screen off, and all those kind of things are there. And then practice digital security and safety because how do we have a safe net? And so when you look at all these uh, three uh, uh, issues, three component issues, he's talking about, is emphasizing MI competencies and digital skills, which is paramount. And this uh, uh, three points also emphasize inquiry-based skills. Inquiry-based skills. People, people to have that inquiry uh, initial to, uh, uh, to inquire, the dialogue, and ability to meaningfully engage. Think critically, click wisely, all form of content provider irrespective of technology so that they are using. And so these three elements established above uh, give essential knowledge 
of one. Even the summary of the first part now, now one, the, uh, the function of media. What's the function of media? What's the function of libraries? What's the function of archives? What's the function of other information providers? And the second thing, second knowledge, uh, this three key elements of MIR is personal call that what are the conditions under which these news media and information providers can efficiently perform their function, those functions that they've been identified with. And the third knowledge we're stressing here is how to evaluate the performance of these functions. You see, by accessing the content and services, the reward, they offer. So this curriculum, uh, these three elements uh, demonstrate that. And from what I've said so far, you can see that uh, there's no way we can uh, engage critically, uh, think critically without having these interrelated competencies. So uh, to run isolated competencies is not going to work, it's not going to make people to be skilled enough or competent enough to be able to engage information. So they need to have these three competencies as one. And so UNESCO is seen it as a composite skill, composite competency that people must have to engage in the 21st century. And so